Hilton. It's such a crowded field now in the world of celebrity news yeah. because it rates, it, it does well. I still love what I do and I take it very seriously and I sometimes get things wrong, but I try to be correct. What led you to take this strong stand against bullying? Well, I used to be one. You know, I, for the longest time, was a douchebag, knowingly. Plus, tell me something people don't know about you. That I'm a really nice person. I like you. Well, thank you. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, our special guest. Good to see him again. Perez Hilton, actor, television, radio personality, celebrity blogger, known for his hit website, PerezHilton.com, where he blogs about all things pop culture. Where you been? How you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to see you again. It's been a while. Your real name is Mario Lavandera? Lavandera. Lavandera. <laughs> How did you pick Perez Hilton? It's just something that came to me because I liked that it sounded odd and weird and different and bizarre. Like, in 2004, when I first started, if you had no idea who I was, which you probably didn't, you instantly knew, oh, there's something different about this. So the Perez is me, it's the Latino, it's the outsider, and the Hilton is the mainstream pop culture celebrity. So I was bringing this outsider's point of view into the world of Hollywood. You're now a single father of two. Yes. You had a surrogate, mm -hmm. right? Do you have a partner? No, but that's next, hopefully. Or not. I, I, I'm happy with my life, more than happy, but um, I definitely aspire to get married. I don't want. I don't want to like have fun date for fun. I mean, I do. They should be fun. <laughs> but I was telling my friend the other day. You know, I don't want to go back on online dating websites, which is how I used to meet guys to go on dates with. That's just so much work. I would happily make time for somebody, but maybe I'm naive and hoping and wishing that I could meet them in the real world. Why do you want to be a father? I just always knew I wanted to. Like, I. Um, remember writing in my journal when I was living in Spain in college about how much I wanted to be a father at 21 years old. Uh, it wasn't a question of if, it was just more of a question of when. So what do you have, a son? I have a son who's three and a daughter who's one. Was it difficult for a single father to pull this off? It's very difficult, but very rewarding. You have to go through channels or? Oh yeah, I mean, with my son, the law was even different then. I had to actually show up in court and petition the court as to why my biological child should be handed to me and I should be his legal father. It's just a technicality, you know, the, the judge just made everybody do that, it was a formality, like he didn't really ever deny anybody that, uh, but that was part of the process and. Um, so what's it like? I don't know, it changes every day. Yeah. It, it, but you it know immediately that this people depended on you. Oh yeah, that's why with children I develop anxiety, which I manage, right. but uh, anxiety in just in, in the term, in, in the sense that I cannot sometimes just stop thinking about the future obsessively. Private school and saving and this and that, and oh my gosh, if that happened to my daughter, if this happened to my son, like my brain is usually hyperactive, but now with kids, like it can't stop. You're so Hollywood, but you moved back to New York? Well, I moved to New York in 2013. I was there for two and a half years, and now I moved back to LA. Why, why the move, why the move well, there? Well, I moved to New York originally in, in 2013, because I had been in LA for 11 years, and I was ready for a change. And I got that change. I enjoyed New York to the fullest. I saw every single Broadway show, sometimes more than once. And uh, then I just realized LA is better for a family. You get more space, it's better weather, it's easier. And it's just more affordable, to be so honest. How, how do you, manage? you have a nanny? My mom also lives with us. Oh, you move your mother. Yeah, my mom is very involved and. and I'm so thankful that she's around. No, what, and I work from home, so that's a big first blessing. An actor? What, what, what? I, was, I went to school for acting, and I kind of got sidetracked uh, in the most wonderful way. And I love it because I'm now my own boss, and I don't have to depend on other people to give me work. How do you make money? Uh, through advertising. And also, I do so many different things these days. I also make money doing radio, and I also make money doing acting. I'm in the AbFab movie that comes out this summer, a small little cameo, but it was super fun. How did the blogging start? As a hobby. Like, I just discovered blogs, and in 2004, when I started, people really weren't using Using them to discuss celebrities. They were mainly just di diaries, like, oh, I went on a date and it was awful. It was very uh, first person. 
but I didn't want to talk about myself. I always was more fascinated by celebrities because most of them are crazy in 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 a in an entertaining way, and I I just. Worked really hard at it. How did it catch on? Well, they're really. Little, I'll talk about this later. You're a little mean. I was, yeah. Well, it caught on just because there wasn't that much competition in 2004. Like back then, the celebrity magazines, like the People's and the Us Weeklies, weren't even using their own websites to break celebrity news. They were just using their websites to get subscriptions. Like, go to our website to sign up for a subscription to the magazine. Now the world has changed so much. The magazines are not what they looked like before. Uh, it's all about breaking news immediately. As, what is the digital age? done for you? Well, it's it's done everything yeah. for me. It's made my life so what much better. What will it have on your children, do you think? I don't know, but my son and my daughter don't live a very digital life in that we don't watch TV. You don't? No. My son's three. I mean, every once in a while, as a treat, I'll put on TV, like maybe once a week. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we don't watch TV. He doesn't have an iPad. I read, to, he, but that, that's why he loves books, right? He doesn't know how to read. He's only three, but he'll pick them up himself and he'll like pretend to read it and just sit in the corner and like look at the pages and try to remember, oh, this was from that part of the story that I heard. And he, he's, he's just a, a very calm child because he's also not like constantly stimulated by all of this stuff. What's his name? Mario. And the, the third. And my daughter's name, Mia. Why Perez is ready for Hillary. That's next. We're back with Perez Hilton. You don't have competition. Or oh, now you have competition, right? You, you had the world to yourself, right? Yeah, I mean... It's such a crowded field now in the world of celebrity news. I mean, even the mainstream news channels... Maybe not right now because of all the political coverage, but... Celebrity news has become mainstream news yeah. because it rates, it, it does well. But do you, do, you, do you like things like the Enquirer, the Globe? Do I like them? I mean, um, do you regard them as factual? Not really. Um, they're good for a laugh. If you, if you take it seriously, I would probably uh, question well, your, your, your sanity. Friend said, a friend said, or uh, overheard at lunch. I oftentimes will post like the covers of those magazines, like laughing at them. Yeah. I still love what I do and I take it very seriously and I sometimes get things wrong, but I try to be correct. Now that you're ready for Hillary. Right? I am. What, what makes you so strong for her? I just think she's the most qualified person for the job. Uh, I wholeheartedly, 110% think as she said, Donald Trump is fundamentally unequipped to be president, or temperamentally not equipped. Something along that line is what she, her, her exact quote was. I do wish that in the Democratic primary process there would have been more than just two candidates to choose from for the majority of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it sucks. Were you attracted to Bernie at all? Uh, no, but I respect the the intentions of most of the things he wants to accomplish and the passion of his supporters. And also I'm disheartened and disappointed by seeing a lot of those passionate supporters awfully and just disgustingly attacking Hillary Clinton. Like I may not l support Bernie and be, you know, pro him and, or, or I didn't vote for him, but I'm not going to attack him and say he's an awful person. He should be in jail. Like the rhetoric that the Republicans are so often repeating about Hillary, I've seen echoed by Bernie supporters. What do you think of the Trump campaign? I mean, he's great at getting the media to talk about him, but underneath that all is just a lot of just unpleasant, more than unpleasant, just awfulness, straight up racist, xenophobic, sexist, disgusting. And when he refers to Latinos, does that personally hurt you? Uh, well, yes, but I, I'm. But even more so, like I, I, I think that you know, heritage, uh, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, sex, all of that is second to just being an American. And as Hillary Clinton has said, like the 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 the, the Trump uh, campaign is fundamentally un-American. One area he seems progressive is the transgender. He would welcome them at his hotels, and he has no problem with that end, which is opposite of the conservative stand. I mean, that's, that's like, great. <laughs> but, but that one little thing isn't going to make me like him or support him. I mean, he is the kind of person who most people, when they realize they made a mistake, will try to fix that. But when he realizes he makes a mistake, he instead 
finds a way to try and double down is the and term. He never apologized. Yeah, not apologize, but but to, to justify his mistake and 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 deflect from it. Something that we're both involved with, Miss Prejean. Yeah, <laughs> Carrie Prejean. Yes. You asked her the question. That was Miss USA, right? Yes. You asked her. What question? I asked her about same-sex marriage before it was way before it was legal here in the United States. And her States. answer was her answer was just a hot mess. Disjointed. Then she, I had her on, mm -hmm. and she got mad at me. Yes. She said she made an agreement not to discuss it, and I said, "Well, why did you agree? Why did you agree not? Why did you make it?" Not? And she took her microphone off and it was insane. And uh, then you came back on. Yes, that was a a, a big moment in time and, and in my career because I, I was thankful that I was able. Able to use my voice where many people just saw me as some silly dude talking about silly celebrities to discuss something meaningful and for me equality is extremely personal and meaningful to me and hopefully to all Americans I was also involved in, in the Miss Universe this December, so I, I think I have good luck for pageants. Whenever I'm on, scandalous things yeah, happen. Yeah, what happened in that one? That's when uh, Steve Harvey announced the wrong winner, and chaos in, uh, was happening. You were a judge? I was a judge as well, yeah. Now, did you vote for the winner? I did. I ended up voting for Miss Philippines. How did he have the wrong winner? Do, you, do we know now how I he... think he just, he had the right winner on the card. He just read it in the wrong order, is what ended up happening. It's so live did TV. you know right away he'd made a mistake? Yes, because, you know, the judges and I, we all knew how we voted. And then, and then at that moment, I was like, is this rigged? Like, is this, <laughs> did our votes not matter? Because they also did change the voting this year to include um, an audience vote from home. They were allowed to oh, participate yeah. as well. And all of the contestants. So Was they Trump were, I still think, on it? Or no, I made a point of, of saying that during the competition, he sold them all um, to, to IMG. What led you to take this strong stand against bullying? Were well, I used to be one. You know, I, for the longest time, was a douchebag, knowingly. Like, that was, and, and in many ways, that's the Trump, the Trump uh, M.O. as well. Like, he will pick, 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 trying to get a response, um, looking at people's insecurities and, and putting a magnifying glass on them. Oftentimes, I would say things that, I always agreed with them, but it was a heightened version or done in a very exaggerated way, trying to get a reaction out of people. I was like, I, I don't care if I piss somebody off. I want to piss them off. I'd rather they say something negative towards me than, than not anything at all. Why Perez changed his tune. More on that right after the break. We're back with Perez Hilton. He's unique in his field. Uh, you, you were sometimes tough on people. You outed people. Yeah. You were embroiled in controversy and a lot. Why did you do that um, as you look back? Energy is contagious, right? So positive energy is contagious and negative energy is contagious. When I started out back in 2004, I began as a fan of pop culture, a critical fan. But as the years went on, I kind of lost myself in this character that I had created. And I ended up becoming so far from whom I really was, or, or I ended up really becoming that person. And then it took, in 2010, a life-shaking moment to get me to change. You know, I you loved- You were a little bit of a bully. I was a huge one. Mm -hmm. um, but I listened to the universe and it smacked me upside the head and said, you need to change your ways, which is what Oprah Winfrey says. I, I, maybe like once a year, I'll go back and I'll watch the last episode of the Oprah Winfrey show where it's just her talking for an hour, sharing the secrets that she's learned from life along the way. And she said, just listen, life will lead you to where you need to be. The universe will give you the answers. And if you don't listen, it'll speak louder. And if you still don't listen, it'll smack you outside the head. So that's what happened. In 2010, there were these gay teenagers, like over 10 within a period of months that committed suicide. Mm. It seemed to me like a real epidemic. And I was trying to do something positive, lending my voice, to support young gay people saying, it's okay, it gets better. So I made this video saying it gets better. It was the movement at the time. And the response that I got from making that really surprised me. People were saying, how could you make an it gets better video when you're part of the problem? You're a hypocrite, you're a bully. And I said, wow, if the majority of people think I'm a douchebag, but I don't feel that's who I am in my heart, well, I need to change how I operate, how I do things, because that's not who I am. So in, in the last six years, I've been taking the mask off and showing the world more of my real self. You had uncensored photos of celebrities? I don't do that anymore either. Jennifer Lawrence wouldn't buy your apology. If you could apologize to someone right now, who would it be? I would apologize to, and I have, 
already, but I would apologize again to Adam Sandler. I, that was the worst, that was the worst. I said something unpleasant about his daughter. Yeah, like why? Yeah. Okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. I throw okay, some. I like games. <laughs> Best celebrity encounter? Mm, I would say Madonna. Worst celebrity encounter? Jesse Metcalf, this actor. Historical figure you most admire? Madonna. <laughs> Perez, you're, you're really weird. Uh, I there's am. a part of you that's still weird, Perez. <laughs> if there was such a thing as time travel, would you go back or forward? Back. Childhood celebrity crush? Mark Wahlberg. A great guy. Secret talent? I mean, I, I, like, um, I, I am a good actor, I would say. Yeah, I've we got, see I've, more of you. Yeah, I, I did this horror movie that people can download on it Amazon. Called? It's called Most Likely to Die. I'm one of the leads in that, so. Do you die? I can't say. Okay. I might be the killer, who knows? What should we all be paying more attention to? I would say, and I would say this to myself, um, the real world, not your phone. Like, I, I, I I'm really too glued to my phone and I hate it. You are a victim of it? I know, like, I, I'm on every social media platform because I have to be for my job, but, and I l enjoy it, but it's, it's, it's like food, right? Like, I enjoy eating, but imagine being in a job that forces you to eat nonstop or booze. Like, I enjoy a drink, but imagine being in a job that forces you to drink every day. Like, after a while, you'll hate food or you'll become an alcoholic. Tell me something people don't know about you. That I'm a really nice person. I like you. Well, thank you. What's like the last you. time you cried? When I watched Hillary Clinton give her acceptance speech. That was speech, a momentous. I ugly cried. It was like a ugly, ugly cry. Perez will take your social media questions coming right up. My guest is Perez Hilton. What a fascinating, you are a fascinating person. Oh, thank you. Welcome back to L.A. Thank you. At Bronte Price on Twitter, if Trump becomes president, will you move out of the country? No, I think people that say that are silly. Cassidy Kelly on Facebook, what's the celebrity scandal of the moment? Well, of the moment, literally of the moment, today, the celebrity scandal is Richard Simmons. Have you heard about what happened or what might be happening? He became a woman? Allegedly. I don't know. His publicist is denying that, saying he just wanted some time away from the spotlight. Then there's the conspiracy theorist saying he is just waiting until he can make the appropriate announcement at the right place. Because he was so public. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely bizarre. Something's up. And I'm actually happy if it were that he's transitioned because it's obviously something he would want to do and it means there's nothing worse happening. Like I was thinking maybe he has dementia or maybe yeah. he's just really unwell. Paula on Facebook, is there any story you regretted leaking? Oh God, perhaps the worst. And at the time I was super confident. I think it was 2007. I had impeccable, which obviously turned out not to be so impeccable, sources that told me that Fidel Castro had died. So I went with that. I'm like, Fidel Castro is dead. And uh, <laughs> who knows, maybe he is. No, he's not. <laughs> and Captain Khalil wants to know, what do you make of TMZ and how they do their reporting? I make nothing of them other than I wish I had a staff <laughs> of 50 people like them. I'm still independently owned. I don't even try to compete. Like, I'm not trying to compete. I can't compete. You know, they are this yeah. product of a corporate entity. But you have sources. I mean, I have a staff, but my staff is like a handful. Paul Raphael on the Larry King Now blog. Gossip news seems to make its way into the mainstream. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. You know, people always want a break, like a, a mental time out from the serious stuff, so it's easily digestible. Yeah. At Geiger Rager, do you plan on having more kids in the future? I don't plan on it, just because kids are expensive. I'm not making baller money. Like, Gina Magnavia on the Larry King Now blog, would you want your children to work in the entertainment industry? I mean, I just want my kids, and actually, having gone through the preschool process, it made me think a lot about what I want for my children. And what I want for them, I now know, and it's specific. I want them to do whatever they want, dot, 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 so long as they work really hard at it. Like, if I can instill one thing in them, it is that you have to work harder than anybody else. Like, it's all about the work ethic. And not just professionally, but if you put work into your body, into your health, your fitness, you'll get rewarded. If you put work into your relationships, you'll get rewarded. Life is about the work. 
You once said you wanted to retire at age 35. Was that true? I didn't, I didn't want to retire, but I wanted the option. Like, I wanted to know, okay, now I've made enough money to never have to work again. And with kids, I don't think that's feasible. <laughs> You turned 38 this year. What do you hope the next 38 years of your life will look like? I hope they look a lot like yours or that of Joan Rivers in that I hope to have a long career. You've changed over the years, obviously. I'm told you have ambitions for a television talk show. Tell I just want to work, period. Like, if, if somebody wants to give me a paycheck to do anything, I'm down. I used to, and I think it's also just like the nature of show business like if you've been around long enough you know that everything is cyclical things are in waves and some moments you're hot some moments you're not so hot what's like, your day like i wake up really early i wake up at six because i have to be on east coast time and i have to get some work done before so what do you call contacts what do you how do your day begin I first, because my brain uh, is like a is is like the sky, right? I don't want it to get too cloudy. So the first thing I do is just try to answer all my emails right away, because I don't want to get behind. And then I'll just see what's happening. And check it all out. Yeah. All your contacts and see, day well, begins. Yeah, yeah. Welcome Good to back see to you. LA. Thank you. Good to see you. Best of luck. Thank you. A big thanks to my guest Perez Hilton. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Kings Things. See you next time. On Larry King now, it's Perez Hilton. It's such a crowded field now in the world of celebrity news yeah. because it rates, it, it does well. I still love what I do and I take it very seriously and I sometimes get things wrong, but I try to be correct. What led you to take this strong stand against bullying? Well, I used to be one. You know, I, for the longest time, was a douchebag, knowingly. Plus, tell me something people don't know about you. I'm a really nice person. I like you. Well, thank you. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest, good to see him again, Perez Hilton, actor, television, radio personality, celebrity blogger, known for his hit website, PerezHilton.com, where he blogs about all things pop culture. Where you been? How you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to see you again. It's been a while. Your real name is Mario Lavanderea? Lavandera. Lavandera. <laughs> How did you pick Perez Hilton? It's just something that came to me because I liked that it sounded odd and weird and different and bizarre. Like, in 2004, when I first started, if you had no idea who I was, which you probably didn't, you instantly knew, oh, there's something different about this. So the Perez is me, it's the Latino, it's the outsider, and the Hilton is the mainstream pop culture celebrity. So I was bringing this outsider's point of view into the world of Hollywood. You're now a single father of two. Yes. You had a surrogate, mm -hmm. right? Do you have a partner? No, but that's next, hopefully. Or not. Uh, I, I'm happy with my life, more than happy, but um, I definitely aspire to get married. I don't well, want to, like, have fun, date for fun. I mean, I do. They should be fun. <laughs> but I was telling my friend the other day, you know, I don't want to go back on online dating websites, which is how I used to meet guys to go on dates with. That's just so much work. I would happily make time for somebody but maybe I'm naive and hoping and wishing that I could meet them in the real world. Why do you want to be a father? I just always knew I wanted to. Like, I um, remember writing in my journal when I was living in Spain in college about how much I wanted to be a father at 21 years old. Uh, it wasn't a question of if, it was just more of a question of when. So what do you have, a son? I have a son who's three and a daughter who's one. Was it difficult? for a single father to pull this off? It's very difficult, but very rewarding. You have to go through channels or? Oh yeah, I mean, with my son, the law was even different then. I had to actually show up in court and petition the court as to why my biological child should be handed to me and I 